Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Season 5, Episode 10 of Bell the Bell with Bobby Blaze. I am your host, Professor Jeremy Vilmer. And now, the man who still wishes we called the show Pin Me Pay Me, Blaze and Bobby Blaze. <laughs> Hey, now, I do wish that, but it's called Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze, and I am a sports uh, pro wrestling fan. I almost had something dirty to say right at the top of the hour. (laughs) Yes, sir. Bobby, do you know the reason why I went with this name instead of Pin Me Pay Me? I do not. It's because it would actually have your name in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I really do. Yeah. A lot that's... of people love the four Bs, the B B B B. Yep. So um I well, can dig it. Man. I saw I saw you on somebody's YouTube show. What was that fellow's name like two weeks ago? Oh yeah. Um Paul. Yeah. Um, two, three, all the way was a YouTube channel, I think. Yeah, I saw you on there, and then you said it again on there. You're like, I don't know why we didn't go with that name. And I'm like, <laughs> I guess I should just say it one day why, why yeah. I suggested this. But yeah, that was, it was a wise decision, I it, know. Yeah, it was as simple as that. It's Also, the first time I saw Pin Me Pay Me was on a shirt Al Snow was wearing on uh, Monday Night Raw, I think. Yeah, 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 I think so. And um, I really didn't get that reference uh of the pin me pay me till as far as the book title till well after it, I was just um, like a size riding down the street to uh, Lexington, Kentucky mm-hmm. with a bunch of notes and about six or seven stories completed. And um, pin me pay me. Ca- I already had to have boot have boots will travel in mind as a second part, but I was like uh, the pin me pay me. That just kind of came to me talking to a buddy, just like you and I talk each and every week here, you know, yep. Um, uh, and it just came to me. I wrote it down my notebook real quick, and I said, "Okay, here's the title now." So, um, yeah. yeah, and I like this uh, Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze podcast. It's hey. it's been going pretty good, and I think we have episode eighty five today. Eighty four, eighty five. We're up there. Yeah. And the reason I said eighty four, eighty five, we had one we took down. Our initial one, um, we let it run for what six months or so, just an introduction one, and um, we, we you call that one? Um, Hello, Bobby, or um, yeah, we I based it off the room, but we took it down. It just um, it was just kind of a or we we hadn't hit our stride for sure, but we was just kind of getting getting our feet wet with the podcast. Yeah, basically, it was just the introduction to us and the show. Yes. Uh, I think we only left it up for three or four months. Yeah, and that's what I thought. Even I don't have a copy of it anymore, as far as I know. Yeah. 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 I know we we uh, just ribbing around about the room, uh, the movie. Oh, yes. It was and, called uh, Oh Hi Bobby. That's what it was. Yeah. Oh Hi Bobby. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Hi, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That was um, just an introduction of us. Now, people has gotten to know us. Uh, matter of fact, we've gotten some uh, reviews here recently. Do you want me to read one of them? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. One here. We just got one um, this week. It says on Tuesday of this week, uh, BB, BB is great. Bobby Blaze and Professor Jeremy Vilmer are always good for a fun romp through the old days of professional wrestling. Not, huh, uh, has a bunch of X's and E's and XX. So you know what that means. Yeah. Anyway, in the days of Terry Funk, Bruiser Brody, Dusty Rose, and a Bob Armstrong, or your idea of great pro wrestling, then this is a show for you. Just be sure to bring up how Bobby was number such and such for Goldberg streak. I was number 67. I was victim 67. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) And I think we missed one from September. We had another one that just said, um, awesome show. And um, from our 111 fan, I think. um, Yeah, 111 number fan. So he's a fan. Number, he's a damn fan. He's a, that's a fan right there. <laughs> oh, the first guy that was from Scott from Cleveland, Ohio, or Steve, rather, Steve from Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you for that review. Uh, all reviews are appreciated, like we say, man. Just make them uh, fair and honest, you know. And that was on iTunes. So um, I haven't checked any of the other ones lately. But uh, we've got uh, 37 five star reviews on uh, iTunes, and that makes me feel pretty damn good, man. Oh, whoa, whoa. We got, so, hold on. We got 36 five star and one one star. Oh, okay. I'm okay. Who's passing out the dimes over there, you fucking schmucks? Whoa, <laughs> uh, man. Um, I don't oh, know. That, that chapped my ass a little bit, Bobby. Uh, All right. 
You know what? We're going to move on to bigger and better things. Okay. <laughs> uh, real quick, anybody who's listening, we do have a sponsor for this episode. It is Private Internet Access. If you are thinking about buying a VPN, go to tinyurl.com slash blazepia. You'll get a hell of a deal. I think it's uh, you get two years for less than three bucks a month uh, and two free months as well. So go check them out if you're looking for a VPN. Bobby, I got a question for you here. Yes. It's from Chris Morale on Twitter, at Chris okay. Morale. Uh, he says, were there any matches that you saw live while working for any company that almost made you quit because they were so good? Oh, man, I really thought this went over. Um, I know the exact time and place, uh, but it, it actually had just the opposite effect of me wanting to quit, to be honest with you. But as far as being so good, um, this goes back to about uh, February of 93, February, March of 93. I was on a tour in Australia. And if the name Malenko, if I haven't said it once, I've said it a thousand and one times on this program. Um, on that tour was Malenko, the Malenko brothers, Joe and Dean, and uh, Chris Benoit, and um, a lot of WWF guys, uh, and Jushin and Thunder Liger. And so um, one night while watching those guys in some form or another, either, either being tag team or going in singles matches, um, and just watching Dean, and he was so far ahead of his time at that time. And, um, of course, he had a big part of my training and this was early on and sitting there in Australia watching him work one night. And man, it was just, um, I wasn't ready to tie up my boots. It wasn't ready to quit the biz or anything like that. Um, it was, um, uh, IWA international wrestling Australia actually was the name of the company also, by the way. But, uh, what it did, it, it reinforced me that I was doing something good and doing something right that I felt doing, um, with my life, but, but not quitting it. It's probably one of the few things in my life I haven't wanted to quit. It, it inspired me to become better. It really did because I realized what athletes those guys were. And I had to rely back to when I was first initially was training um, from just being an athlete mm -hmm. and um, from my earlier career um, as an athlete, football, basketball, track, field, et cetera. So um, I really cannot tell you there was one time that I watched someone that um, or a match that just, you know, made me want to say, oh, man, I could get the fuck out of this business. Um, but but I've seen a lot of talented people. But I remember during that time, it was something that just uh, inspired me to do better and become better and uh, to not to not like take a lazy bump or to not give the people their money worth or, or whatever. So I hope that answers your question, Chris. And we appreciate you sending that in very much. Keep sending them, guys. We do answer them. Yes. Uh, either on Twitter or we'll bring it up. On a, if it's something that needs to you know, like this here, you know, Twitter on that form, you only have like 280 characters. Next thing you know, you're writing a story. That's not the the right, uh, you know, social media and the right way to maybe get that out there. But when you're listening to the podcast, we can explain more in details and I can go over 280 characters and let you know what's happening, you know. But uh, we appreciate that. And that was sent in to the, uh, on Twitter at the Bell to Bell Blaze podcast on Twitter. You can find Jeremy at the Geek is Cast, and you can find me at Bobby Blaze 744. We can get that out of there while we're talking about that. But I hope it answered your question, Jeremy. What do you think? I think that probably covered it. That probably covered it. You know, um, having not ever wrestled, I, we, you and I talked about this real briefly off, you know, before we started recording. My well, I was answer, hoping you are going to bring this up. Yeah. Okay. My, my answer would have just been like, if I were in the business and I'm backstage and fucking Dean Malenko's in the ring, I'm just going, <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm going to go be a plumber because there's no fucking way I can go out and do that. So and good night. I laugh. And I said, you're, you're close. <laughs> so I said, you would write in the ballpark what I was going to say. Yeah. So. Cause I remember back in the nineties, obviously before anything bad happened, I saw Malenko and Benoit on the same episode of uh, uh, Nitro. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit. Nobody is ever going to wrestle as good as those two. Yeah. And that was, I mean, just, I was, uh, uh, Malenko more just because of his technical ability. He could snatch any hold from anywhere. That yeah. was, it just blew me away the way he would do that. And then Benoit made everything look like it fucking hurt. And it did. Yeah. He was solid. He did. I mean, I respectfully, he was solid um, in the ring. Yeah, I've said this before. Eddie, Eddie uh, Guerrero, you could barely t feel his touch of his wrist. He was so light, so smooth, so fluid. Dean was right there in the middle. 
you knew he was doing something and you could feel it and you knew the direction he was leading and guiding you. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was perfect. It was perfect. And then, um, Chris, uh, just, uh, snug worker. And, uh, I, I liked that a lot. So I liked all three, uh, but I didn't mind the snugness. I, I, I really enjoyed that as much because, um, that keeps the realism in it, you know? Yeah. Well, but yeah. So what you saw with, with, with him is, is, Basically, what you saw is what you got. If he, yeah. if he let out the chop with an arm bar or cross face, you know, you you was locked in, you know. Yeah. Well, and I, so, you know, I think you've said on here before that you preferred working a semi with guys who were semi snug. Yeah, I prefer that. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so uh, Bobby, a couple of weeks back, and we've been threatening to get around to answering this. Nate left us a voicemail, mm-hmm. and I'm going to play that right here. Yeah, I'd like to get a large number four. Yeah, with fries, cheese. Yeah, and a drink. Yeah, large. Yo, know, large diet. Oh, hey. Oh, okay. We're not at the drive through, but we are at the Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze. What's up, guys? Linda, get back in there. We don't need none of that right now. Wanted to throw out a show suggestion for you guys. I know how much you guys love when we do that, right? What I'm thinking, though, is. When you two guys get together, you always come up with these great top 10 lists and you always come up with these great episodes and I enjoy them. They help me on my weekly drive to and from work, school, wherever I'm going. Why not you guys tell the stories of what made you pro wrestling fans? What are your favorite matches? What are your favorite moments? What are those moments that stick out in your mind? What made you fall in love with the sport of pro wrestling? Love you guys. Thanks for all the support. Keep at it. So Nate wants to know, I'm just to paraphrase what we heard there. Basically why, well, first off he wants a cheeseburger. Um, <laughs> so, do I. so, so, you know, somebody, somebody get these men a cheeseburger. Um, but he wants to know what it was. I mean, primarily I'm sure it's you that he wants to hear this from because nobody gives a fuck why I fell in love with wrestling. So Bobby, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is it? that really turned you on to pro wrestling with matches, moments, wrestlers, whatever, storylines, whatever, what caught you, man, just the, um, I don't know, just, just seeing two guys going at it. I, 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 I of course I thought it was a fight, you mm-hmm. know, and I liked that aggression. Uh, we mentioned last week during the Sheik's episode, it was, um, the Sheik and Bobo or Sheik and Bruno or whoever. And it's just like, there was that, 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 that address, the aggression of it that uh, it was real, and it looked to me, um, I probably saw that a year, year and a half before I saw boxing, so um, I was exposed to it a little bit sooner, mm-hmm. um, and, and, it was a, and it was a closeness. I've mentioned this before. There was a, I watched that first match with one of my um, aunts in, in, in Maryland, and, and then that you know, made me have a connection with her you know, throughout my life. Um, and then, then my brother, who's a couple years younger than me, um, we had moved and, and we started picking up the Memphis territory and he turned me back on to it. So that was a bond between my brother and myself. Um, the, the one move you'll find this interesting is he come out to tell me, of course, we didn't have playback back then or in internet or anything. It was on a little black and white TV, yeah. but he was describing this move that the superstar Bill Dundee had done. And I'm not going to say he was doing it to Jerry Lawler, but he probably was doing it to Jerry Lawler just to, to keep the storyline straight here. And so we had to wait a whole week. But he, he told me about this move, and he was trying to show it to me. And um, like I said, he's, he's a few years younger than me, and he's, like, trying to jump up over my back and tell me to bend down. And I have no idea what's going on because I hadn't watched it for forever. You know, we was just playing around. But the next week, of course, there he was, Superstar Dundee, you know, le- um, Sunset flipped someone. That was the move. Okay. When he sunset flipped them. He pinned them. So that was a big part of, you know, just my, my brother turning me on to something again, like, oh, I was telling, that's pro wrestling, man. That's, that's professional wrestling. Cause he, he hadn't seen it, you know, uh, when I did, you know, a couple years before that. So there was that bond there. Um, that's a big part for me. So that's a moment, um, that I won't forget, you know, because my brother turned me on to it and also turned me on to, you know, watching the Memphis wrestling, we knew, uh, we, we had a general idea when that was going to come on the following Saturday for the next several, you know, and it did, you know, we ended up being a, a part of our life, you know, uh, 
they, they changed times here and there, but for the most part, we knew we was getting Memphis Wrestling live on a. We got it out of a uh, station out of Lexington, Kentucky, so that's pretty cool. And then um, just that that part, man. Um, I got an excerpt I'm gonna read from my book in just a little bit later, but I want to know what made you a fan, man. Tell me a little bit about your. I know your your brother's name is Dusty. Yep. After a certain plumber son, maybe. Yep. Maybe not. Uh, but I'd like to hear your story. Well, so I I think it was like 11 or 12 is where I started watching wrestling. You know, and my brother's quite a bit younger than me. He's seven years younger than me, so he he would have been like a little kid, you know. But I start watching wrestling, and my mom. Tells me, oh, yeah, your great-grandfather and your great-uncle Tom used to go every, I think it was Thursday night, but I don't remember. He used to go every Thursday and watch wrestling here in town. And then I found out that guys like Roddy Piper and Andre the Giant had worked here in Modesto. Now, Modesto, for people who aren't familiar with California, we're about dead center of the state. We're a little bit north of center. But we're in a valley in the middle of it. Famous people have come from here, but famous people do not live here, typically. Uh, we're not a big town. We're not a small town. We're an ag town that used to have a lot of canning in it. So there was nothing famous about this town except for George Lucas and guys like that. But now I start hearing about, you know, all these guys I'm watching on TV with at this time, I think with the WWF is where I would have seen them. But so now my dad's telling me about these guys and this guy. And then I discovered the NWA and now mm. Dusty Rhodes, who, I didn't know up until this time. My little brother is probably named after. He's on the NWA shows. But son of a bitch, these guys have their own world champion. <laughs> and they got a world champion. And then I discovered the AWA. They got a world champion. Yeah. And holy shit, that guy can fucking wrestle. <laughs> and Bachwinkle, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of cross the street by going around the entire planet here, okay? When I was a little kid, I loved Star Trek more than anything. I had a, my third birthday was Star Trek themed, right? My cousin, who was also a wrestling fan later in life, uh, he's been gone for about 25 years now, though, um, <clears throat> tells me one day, he's like, hey, you know, Star Trek has been on the air for like 25 years. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, he goes, there's a whole series before Captain Kirk with Captain Pike. And then I saw the episode where they go back and talk about Pike. So now I'm like, fuck, there must be... <laughs> hundreds of episodes of this that I've never even seen, you know? Well, I had that moment with wrestling. So I'm like, okay, so wait. If the NWA is the oldest wrestling organization in the world, where did AWA and WWF come from? And then as time goes on, and UWF, wait, where did I... And so I like to go and look at how things fit together. Yeah. And, you know, wrestling for me, it, it scratched certain things, like... I've got a bloodlust. I like watching people kick the shit out of each other, so wrestling ticked that box. Um, it also has very technical holds and joint manipulation, which I think is really, like, mystifying, like how, how you can do some of these holds and, you know, get a submission hold on somebody. Yeah. It's also dramatic as fuck. I mean, it grabbed you, by, especially back then, when you, when you just, you knew it was real, regardless of what your friends were saying. Yeah. And it just grabbed you by the balls and dragged you through a story that ended with somebody getting their ass kicked, you know. Yep. And you always felt good when there when that blow off came. So it was, yeah. you know, you get a little adrenaline rush at the end of that. Um, you know, so it also had a history that was really hidden that you would have to dig around. And until the internet came along, there was a lot of shit you just were never going to find out about it. Exactly. And if I might interrupt you real quickly, mm -hmm. it took me to a moment there too. We, um, my brother and I, and we started having, you know, we started buying the magazines, of course. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we had seen the magazines at the drugstore stand or at the um, uh, newsstand there, and we'd have to wait for those to come out. And there was, you know, probably three or four different magazines, a couple of them, you know, way better than the others. But we would we would buy those and we would see some of these guys like you mentioned, Dusty Rhodes, we hadn't seen in the Memphis. You know, we kind of had to do our own research, too. And we have an uncle. And my brother's actually four years. I said a couple. He's four years younger than me. So he's old enough to read at this point. So I'm probably, you know, nine or ten. Um, and I know he read real early. So, you know, I could. But I'm just going I'm, I'm going to say I'm nine or ten. But we have an uncle. That's right in between us. It was a change of life child. Mm -hmm. um, we joke around because um, I'm two years, I'm two years older than he is, and and he's my uncle. But anyway, yep. um, 
he he lived in, in Baltimore, so he would get to go to some of the uh, matches at the Baltimore, Baltimore Arena, and and we had had changed some pictures through the mail, uh, snail mail, you know, like cut a magazine up and. You know, Lord Smith's probably worth money now, but, you know, send a picture yeah. of the macho man that he had never heard at that time, you know, that was because ICW started coming through. And my brother and I was just talking this week. They used to work their butt off. But then we would send we smartened up and we started exchanging programs. So we he'd you know, buy a program from the arena and send it to us. And we'd buy one from the armory or if we went to the Civic Center here and we would we would do that, you know, kind of we didn't do tapes or anything, but we did magazines, you know, and it was like. Oh, uh, Vern Gagne, uh, Nick Bockwinkle, you know, other, there's a whole other, you know, t- other guys out there besides Jerry the King Lawler, superstar Bill Dundee. Yeah. And then, of course, when you did get the feeds of the NWA, it was like, oh, I've heard about, I remember uh, hearing about Ricky the Dragon Steamboat from seeing him in a magazine because someone from, from my school was saying, uh, there's a guy that looks like him, it's a bodybuilder around town that looks like him. And was like, well, wow, can't wait to see this guy wrestle because he, we knew this guy's a, a pretty good athlete the way he was built, you know. Yeah. And uh, and sure enough, you know, within a year or so, we we saw Ricky the Dragon Steamboat on NWA, you know, things like that. That's that closeness that um, that connects you to to people, to friends, to brothers, uncles. Um, you know, you mentioned your uncles there uh-huh. and cousins. It's just, um, I, I think pro pro wrestling. Uh, I wrote this in. Um, in my story yard time, um, or I kicked out on two, that second book, it crosses, we've done a program, um, we had five matches at a federal prison, and um, it crosses all boundaries. Um, that The story I wrote is Muhammad Ali had come into the prison at one point, and there was about 1,200 inmates at this prison, and he drew about 665 inmates that was out of about 800 is eligible because some of them are locked down and then some of them have to, you know, do food prep and, and, and have jobs within a yeah. prison or just keep it working. And, and Ali got out there and, um, you know, he drew a pretty good crowd because Muhammad Ali transcended different crowds, blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians, the others, the wannabes, whatever, you know, and he got out there and gave a little speech and, and, and did the Muhammad Ali shuffle. Well, I brought professional wrestling in there a few months later, and the same thing happened. We drew six, over 660 people. I think it was six less than what Ali did. And um, again, pro wrestling transcends all those stereotypes. You know, rich, poor, black, white, whatever, economical. Uh, it, it just it doesn't matter. It's it 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 gets it draws people in from every diverse background there is. You know, um, and that's just one of the stories I tell in in um, I kicked out on two the educational wrestler, and I really like that because it's it's uh, based on you know true story that took place, and I do think that's true. And and here's a guy from California that's talking to a guy from Kentucky that's never met other than we started talking about a wrestling book. And then he talked to me about uh, being on his show again as an author. And the next thing you know, we're doing a podcast together. It, all over the love of professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it brought people together and it brought Tex into the mix. It's yep. brought Nate into the mix, you know, that wrote that question this week. Um, I haven't seen Nate for a while, but I used to see him at a show here and hopefully we'll get back out to some shows again soon when everything clears up. But it's just one of those things that it, it unites a lot of people, man. Um, and, and I'm going to say yes. Um, whether you like today's product or whether you don't, whether you like the old school that we always talk about or whether you don't, um, it still says wrestling and, Mm -hmm. um, people just get to, it it, it crosses barriers, man. And, um, enjoy it for what it is. Like I said last week, uh, uh, always remember the good times that pro wrestling brought to you, you know, those good memories. Anyway, um, continue Jeremy. I'm going to read an excerpt from my book here in just a minute, uh, concerning why, why I love it. Oh, sure. But, you know, so like, like I was saying, so now I'm getting into wrestling and my dad's telling me about when him and his little brother would go and watch it here in town. And then my great grandfather on the other side of the family, they all watch wrestling. And I started, you know, like all these guys were here. They wrestled here, you know, 
And that was like wild to me. And then, you know, me and my little brother were watching it together. My cousin and my dad's brother, Mike, you know, uh, the, you know, Mike, my dad and my cousin Chris, they're all gone now. So I get happy memories of them yeah, with that, you gotcha. know. Uh, so my uncle Mike, he was the uncle that was like only a handful of years older than me. So we get to smoke and drink at his place when we went over <laughs> to watch wrestling, you know. Um, but then even like me and my kids used to watch wrestling together after I'd gone through a 15 year period, it seemed like a 15 year period of not really watching wrestling, you know. Yeah. But then like Micah and my brother Dustin would watch wrestling together. They still get together for WrestleMania parties and shit, you know. Nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it, it kind of it scratched my nerdy itch. It scratched my uh, wanting to see people get the shit kicked out of them itch. Um, you know, the technical wrestling holds, which is the type of wrestling I really prefer, is stuff like that. Um, and I did want to share this real quick. I follow Jody Christofferson, who's wrestled as a wrestling cowboy initially and under the name War Pig as well. Um, Micah, when he used to go and set up rings, comes back from one of his trips to Santa Cruz. He's like, yeah. Uh, one of the guys I was hanging out with at the arcade was Jody Christofferson. Uh, he's, he's like a wrestling cowboy. This was a long time ago. I looked at him, and I said, Christofferson? And he goes, yeah. I said, like, Chris Christofferson? He goes, well, I don't know. So we Googled him, and sure enough, it's Chris Christofferson's son. Wow. And I'm looking at him, and I'm like, you fucking, <laughs> okay. But this week, I'm, I forgot I even followed Jody Christofferson on Facebook, and I'm going through my pictures, and there's pictures of him at his dad's house way back when, wrestling with Muhammad Ali. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was thinking, nice. how, what a cool, I mean, could you imagine just having that as a childhood memory? <laughs> well, I mean, you know. That is, man. That is like the coolest thing right there. Um, I remember, matter of fact, uh, one of the first times, well, Memphis only came here a couple of times. The first time they came through, it, it sold out here nationally. Like I said, we had been getting ICW, but... Um, I remember Jimmy Valiant getting out of the car here, a big limo pulled up, and as a part, and they just packed it out, and everyone stood in line to buy these little two dollar pictures, you know, and forever. Um, and that was my brother, one of his favorite wrestlers. We had pictures, of, you know, colored, actual color picture of, uh, you know, uh, handsome Jimmy Valiant then, mm -hmm. and we stood in that line, that gimmick line, man, you know, uh, buying those pictures too. That was really cool. Um, ICW, they did. Um, the, no one, I don't think people come out and signed autographs, but they had a gimmick table that just had a lot of black and white photos they would sell, uh, like from a booth area. The, the wrestlers didn't come out and autograph or anything. If you wanted to get their autograph, you had to kind of catch them going back and forth from the ring. They didn't do a uh, come out there and do the, the gimmick um, like Memphis did. The, the funny thing about that was um, I learned this early on. It, it's just so funny. I was probably in eighth or ninth grade by this time, smart enough to, to know some things, but not definitely never, never know everything anyway. But right. uh, they would say, uh, Jeremy Vilmer uh, out there, he, you, he's the most disgusting manager out there. The professor, he's disgusting. If I see someone else buy one more of his pictures, I swear, <laughs> you know, they had them pictured over there. And, of course, uh, everyone run over it because he had, he had wadded up and tear up the picture, you know, and, and uh, just, it just, I don't know, hell is probably 50 cent back by Xerox uh, page and you'd run over and buy one of them, of course. And, uh, as soon as, you know, you get it, the guy, the heel manager was up there, you know, ripping it up or whatever. Don't you buy the macho man's picture. You yeah. Know? Of course, getting them sales out there is what they were doing. So they did more stuff like that than they did a gimmick table per se. Um, but, but they had one, they had one. The way, yeah, the guys that could do that. And, you know, there was a thing that I don't, I don't know if you see this anymore in pro wrestling at all, but, um, I remember stuff like when, you know, Sting was with Eddie Gilbert at UWF and Eddie Gilbert was the TV champ, right? But they were trying okay. to get some, they were trying to get a story going where Sting was going to be the guy who was number one contender for the TV title. And if watching how they got the wrestlers to work the crowd to get the reaction they wanted was always amazing to me. I mean, more so in oh, retrospect. Yeah. Once once I, once I knew what was happening, it just yeah. became that much more interesting to me. Absolutely. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to read a little excerpt yeah. here. This is from uh, I Kicked Out on Two, The Educational Wrestler. Um, it's from Chapter One. It's called A Pro Wrestler's Love Letter. I'm just going to read one paragraph, and then I'm going to close it out with something from the back of it. 
I loved you forever. Even when I have tried to walk away from you, you pulled me back to you. You're such a slut, yet I desired you. You sold yourself like a cheap whore, and I paid. I wanted you so bad, I paid. From the first time that I paid, just for a chance to see, just to be around you, I paid. Before I even saw you in person or met you personally, I knew I loved you. I had watched you from afar and finally saw you in person. I fell in even further in love with you. I got my chance to see you up close and in person, and I just knew. I just knew I had to get close to you. I had learned, even learned to sneak through your back door without paying you. I did it because I knew. I knew one day, one way or another, I was going to be with you. Caught infatuation, caught lust, caught love. I was going to cop a quick feel just to see you. You bitch. You became my mistress. I know others that have loved you and have been where I was going, yet I wanted to still be with you. When I kissed you, you bit me. Your bite was that of pure lust, and I loved it. Passion. So I'm going to skip over. You get the gist of it. It's a love letter to me writing pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip over towards the end of it. It says, <clears throat> many others have loved you. Some have even called you bad names. Far worse than a slut or a whore, they called you sports entertainment. <laughs> but not me. I called you my love, and I called you by your name professional wrestling <laughs> oh my goodness I so that's that. in my book man if you want to get that book go to tinyurl.com backslash blaze book two that's all out of the i kicked out on two now there's also a, a love letter in the back uh that kind of concludes that love letter i think a lot of people will will really enjoy that um and since i'm reading i read that excerpt from it i'll go ahead and plug the other book too uh, we was talking top of the hour there, Pin Me, Pay Me. That was my first book. If you want to go to tinyurl.com slash blazebook1, that'll get you Pin Me, Pay Me. Um, you can go to Amazon and get either of those books, download them, or you can get the physical copy of them. With the holidays coming up now, it would probably be a really good time to order them. And, again, if you'll use the tinyurl.com slash blazebook1, or tinyurl.com slash blazebook2 and get either of the books. You'll actually help out this Bell to Bell with Bobby Blaze podcast. Uh, we get a little bit of kickback from the program from uh, Amazon affiliate program. So we appreciate that very much. Um, so there's a cheap plug uh, for that horror of professional wrestling. <laughs> but that's why I love it, man. I hope that answered Nate's question. But I think he and I have talked. I think he probably, uh, he probably loved that love letter. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. Hey, Bobby, real quick, I'm going to talk about the uh, the hosting service we use for the show. Yeah. And then I've got a question I'm going to ask you when we come back from that. Uh, something that just kind of clicked in my head that I wonder if it might be the case. So let's listen sure. to this real quick. <clears throat> All right. And that was my totally spontaneous advert for uh, Anchor FM. And you do that so smooth. So smoothly. <laughs> you know, Bobby, I was wondering, as we were talking here, and more because I'm kind of a snob about knowing things, you know, I, I like to dig into things and understand how they fit together. Do you think getting to be a smart fan and picking up on the after mags and learning about, hey, you know, yeah, they may call him Mr. Perfect here, but a year ago he was the AWA world champion who beat the greatest wrestler of all time in Nick Bockwinkle. He was Kurt Henning, a, you know, a third-generation wrestler. So we knew this stuff, and our friends a lot of times didn't. Do you think there was some appeal to being like a smart-ass fan like that? Yeah, you know, I, I think it was uh, especially pre-internet, man. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't, I don't even know if the term smart mark was around prior to pre-internet. It probably was, but I think it just gave you a sense of pride that that because it was something you loved professional wrestling that you had that backstory that someone you used a, you used a pun intended a perfect example um, someone that a lot of people may have not have seen until they watched WWF and they had this new guy named Mr. Perfect see but you knew the backstory the hell he had been an AWA champion he'd be one of the greatest all times you know and and this and that so it it, it kind of gave you the insider's edge man I I, I think so. Um, I, and I, I always like knowing just, you know, we found out, um, you know, Macho Man and, and Lanny Poffo were brothers 
and I don't know how they we even found that out, but it was, it was so – of course, once every – once the word got out about that, they, they played a big angle off of it. But mm-hmm. some people that went, you know, they they didn't know it. You know, it's just so neat to know those type things. Um, I always felt like – because it gave you something um, when you got to school on Monday to talk about um, – that, you know, did you watch the uh, Memphis wrestling? As you got older, did you watch the NWA, whatever, whatever it was, the the, the ESPN four o'clock show. You know, um, when you when you got that, when I was a little bit older at that time, mm-hmm. um, it gave me something to talk to my buddies about the gym. You know, because they knew I had an interest in wrestling, and and we were all wrestling fans still. Um, but if you knew a little bit background story about this character, about that character, um, I absolutely think it was cool. Um, and, and we read those stories in the after magazine and stuff and the way they wrote them were like a shoot. And I like yeah. that, you know, I really do. Um, you, you know, when I was, when I was approaching you about doing this show, about putting it together, I was working on another idea for a wrestling show. And it was going to be a, basically it was going to be a shoot, well, quote unquote, a shoot show. It was going to be all kayfabe all the time. We were going to report on wrestling as if it were 100% legit right out the door. And I didn't know if that would work or not, but there was a part of me that was just like, you know, it, it would be worth trying for 15 or 20 episodes just to see what people. You want. know what? That's an interesting concept that it may work. I don't know. I'll tell you this much that, that I know um, and, and we was lucky enough to have uh, Ron Forler on a podcast a few weeks back, and I listened to his studcast. Um, and the way he tells the stories, he still tells the stories as they happened. And it really, I still, it makes me still believe, you know, he's talking, he just wrestled uh, Terry Funk for the NWA World uh, Champion, Championship in Knoxville in his last episode. There was a gap there of a week that he knew he couldn't tell that story to the following week. So just like in wrestling, I had to wait the whole week to hear, you know, what the, how the match was, how the match went. And he, so he puts it in kind of a kayfabe type terms too, man, um, as to what the fans were experiencing during that time, what, what he was experiencing, an owner and a promoter and stuff. Um, I don't know what program you would watch or, or, or give a take on in today's product. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, would you do it with WWE? Would you do it, you know, with a SmackDown or a Raw? Would you do well, it with the AEW or so there what was, would you do? There was a guy, so there's this guy I know up in uh, Ontario. Mm-hmm. And um, he, when I used to do, me and my ex-wife used to do a Corner Gas uh, podcast where we would watch the show and comment on it. And this right. kid, this kid Robbie would occasionally sit in with us. And like how deep you and I can get about uh, wrestling, he could do that with Corner Gas. Like he knew all the yeah. inside outside stuff. But it turned out he was a huge Impact wrestling fan. So I was like, okay, so I don't like a lot of this shit, so you could handle that. He's like, yeah, I'd be all over it. He goes, I, I watch the shows every week. I watch the WWE still. So I had people in place to do things that I wouldn't be able yeah. to do. I think um, I think if, at, given if things change, that NWA would be a great one to do that with because it, yeah. they would did they did eight weeks of episodes um, that first run through in Atlanta over those two-day periods. And if I saw something on Twitter, which was very little um, of them giving away any matches, the people that were there live, I didn't see many people that I follow putting it up there until after it aired on that Tuesday night. And I really respected that because they were the, even the fans that were there were still treating it like this was taped seven weeks in, ago, you know, but they're just now tweeting about it like it's just now they just now saw it on YouTube and Facebook. So I would I would love to see something like that happen. And, and that may have been the perfect product. And also to do that with an impact or, or ring of honor or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the key to it is, is to to do it like a shoot time. And even though you you know maybe that's been recorded already, obviously um, we're not you know talking Memphis live wrestling anymore. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would I I don't know how well the podcast would do, but I I, I think there would be a definite um, interest out there, um, and you could put people in place. You know, someone you knew was going to watch Impact, someone's going to watch Ring of Honor, someone that, you know you had your NWA official uh, reporter, you know. Bobby Blaze telling you about this week's action, you know, yeah. or whatever it was, and then you just blend it all together. I don't, I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, maybe we're just trying to put fucking toothpaste back into the tube, though. I don't know. Yeah, it could be, but see, that's part of why I thought it could work because it would be, it's almost kind of absurd. 
to treat it that way because the the wrestlers are in the ring winking and nodding at us now, you know. And I thought it might be kind of funny just to go the full other direction and say, nope, I don't, I'm not, I don't buy it for a minute. I don't. <laughs> you guys are not. This is not a fake sport. This is the the greatest sport on the planet. And just go in a hundred percent. Yeah. Know? Just like you know, yeah. the, we got our fingers in our ears going, nah, nah, nah. We can't hear you. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It could work. Um, you know, I know this podcast here. We just kind of. Uh, going back and forth on, on why we love wrestling and, and, you know, the moments in pro wrestling that, that, you know, took us, that kept us involved in pro wrestling or what have you. Um, this is episode number 10 for this, what we call seasons. And, um, I just want to bring this up real quickly. We've had uh bruiser Brody was episode one of this season, mm -hmm. uh, talent enhancements, uh, bam, bam, Gordy was one of them. Uh, you did a wonderful job on the Memorial for Tex and Bullet Bob Armstrong tribute. We had um, the Tennessee stud Ron Fuller on our program. We did we did a deep dive into the CWF Championship Wrestling from Florida. Um, then we had uh, a Road Warrior special on the passing of Animal. We did a, a special on Road Warrior. We did uh, Abby Abdullah the Butcher for Hardcore. We had a uh, a, a set way to go with this particular season, and we finished up with the Sheik. And um, as you can see, we went from Brody to to Bam Bam, and then back to the Hardcore. We tried to split it up as much as we could. So we've got uh, one more episode we're going to uh, do for this season, I think. Is mm -hmm. that right, Professor? Yes. Then we're going to change the tone a little bit and go back to um, to a, a different topic than our hardcore wrestlers, and then also thrown in with uh, some some different territories uh, like we did on CWF. So we've got some good stuff lined up. Um, am I missing anything for this podcast uh, for this episode, Jeremy? Um, by chance? Let me think here. Um, no, I mean I guess you, we could hit this real quick just as an explanation. So when we were putting the show back together. My pitch to Bobby was we'll do X number of episodes and then we'll take X number of weeks off. And then we started doing it and we were like, fuck, we're growing again and we're loving doing it. And we're like, okay, but, but now we don't want to take time off. <laughs> right. right. Um, so, but we kept the seasons thing in place, but really we just use the seasons. Like, like the way we use the top 10 is just to structure the conversation in the episode our seasons are really just to kind of let us focus in on a group of topics that we think go together or, yes. you know, flow to each other at least. Both of those things was really helped this podcast. Um, I had several tweets this week about, um, I'm sure you saw them too, because it was on the uh, belt to belt blaze podcast. Uh, you know, the show just keeps getting better and everything else. Uh, I appreciate that. And I'm sure you do too. And I hope this week hasn't been a letdown because we didn't really have a, a topic per se. It was a topic of what we wanted to get to. Uh, Nate's question that he had asked uh, several weeks back uh, through the anchor uh, voicemail system. And I hope people, more people take advantage of using that. Um, if you're not tweeting to us, hell, just leave us a go on that anchor and there's a place to leave a voicemail uh, on air and, and leave us a message, man. Mm -hmm. um, hell, we would address, we addressed, uh, you know, your question the best way we can either on Twitter or on the episode as, as as you just now found out, we've answered a couple of them today. Um, man, it's just, we, we, when you broke him down, we had eight lined up, uh, what would go together for this, the name of the season. It actually made it easier for us to, to research and yes. also to do it on your Google Doc. So um, we do hope to keep getting better. And we do look forward to uh, getting more reviews on however you find us, you know, whether it's on iTunes um, or Stitcher or Spotify um, anywhere you can find us, whatever you're listening to us at, just give us a, a review. Just be fair and honest, man. And, uh, give us some feedback too. Cause we appreciate it. I know I do. I pop big time. If someone says, man, the program just getting better or they'll say, you know, wow. Uh, and uh, this season, I have to say, I'll put you over here, uh, professor, uh, several of these topics that that's come up, you've done some extensive research and it's been a, it's been a history lesson to, and learn about some of the, um, you know, Brody, the different things we we talked about on him that some other people may have not have known, or me knowing a little bit more about the Sheik and putting those notes together, or just putting that CWF one together, that deep dive there. Um, it's just a history lesson of things. Even last week when the Sheik, when you was bringing up, you know, how that Detroit territory was uh, developed and, and bought, who owned it, and this and that, and 
doing stuff way before, way ahead of their time, I should say. Yeah. So, uh, so wrestling fans, we know you're out there. We know you're listening. Uh, please tell a friend and share it with a friend and uh, let them know, man, that we're out here um, and we're going to try to deliver a good show each and every week for you. I know we got something special lined up for next week, too, on a, uh, that'll kind of conclude this season, if you will. So um, anyway, Jeremy, I appreciate everything you've done and getting us back together. And uh, I hope we've answered everyone's questions for this week's program. Um, no, no particular top 10, but uh, would I say all the fans, uh, one through 10, you're all number one. How's yep, that? that's yeah, <clears throat> I would agree there. Our fans are the best fans, uh, plain and simple. And uh, even more importantly, it's not a competition because they, they love all wrestling podcasts, which makes them perfect for us. Um, yeah, yeah. let me see what I want. What I, there was something I wanted to hit before we quit here though. Um, so we do have the structure for the next seasons figured out. Uh, yep. these two episodes are going to be a little bit looser because I had a computer die Thursday night and I'm still putting things together, uh, which means I lost some of my notes and things like that. Um, but we're, you know, we'll, we'll get through. I mean, we're, oh, yeah. we're okay. We'll get by. It's just that all, my shit that was organized is, on hard drives that I need to find a way to access now. Um, also, I want to say thank you to Nate for another thing. He turned me on to a band last night called Byzantine that kicks ass out of West Virginia. The it, great song. The vocalist, not really my taste, but the music was uh, excellent. Um, you know, so yeah, guys, thank you uh, for listening. Bobby, is there anything else? Did we miss anything? Why we love wrestling? Oh man, I don't think so. I think we've covered it pretty much, man. Um, you know, we just believed in the wrestling product, you know, professional wrestling. We believed in it. And, um, hell, we're just fans, you mm -hmm. know. And we don't try to be smart fans. We don't try to be smart asses. We're not snarky or smarky about it. We just uh, we just fucking love pro wrestling, man. You know, that's all there is to it. And uh, hopefully share some of those memories today to, to you know, please Share yours with us. Write us. Hit us up. Uh, you know, call in. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't think we missed anything. Um, you know, just keep loving pro wrestling. I don't care what you watch. You know, what I'm saying. Um, I really don't. If you watch WWE, if that's your your choice, if you like Impact or if you like AEW, whatever it is, man. If that's what you dig, then keep digging it, man. And hopefully mm -hmm. soon some things will open up and some of these indie shows will come back. Um, Hell, UFC's doing their things. If you love that, that's as combat sport as you can get. Uh, uh, some pro boxing, man. There's going to be a big fucking uh, boxing between uh, Roy Jones Jr. and Mike Tyson doing a, quote, exhibition yeah. uh, next month. You know what I mean? That's going to be. I've been trying to follow that. Dude, uh, Tyson, I, I can't believe how fast Tyson is on his feet still. Oh, man, unbelievable. Yeah. 53 years old, and I think Roy Jones Jr. said he was 51 the other day. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, man, to me, that's just a lot of stuff to look forward to. Um, and, you know, the only thing I can tell you is this, is uh, just keep having hope in the future. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm trying to do, man. Mm -hmm. I'm trying my best to take care of myself uh, mentally. We talk about that every week. Um and just that, be kind to each other because there's a lot of assholes out there. And sometimes you just, you know, just don't take things so personal sometimes and just say, you know what, I'm not going to be an asshole. I'm going to treat myself with some kindness and and um, look out for my fellow man out there the best way you can, man, because it's a crazy world out there. Oh, it is. So, it uh, is. Uh, and it's probably getting more crazy in the next three or four weeks with the elections coming up. And I'm not going to get all political about that, but... You know, we'll just see what happens and hope for the best. But in the meantime, keep your head up and take care of yourself out there, folks. Yep. My ballot is filled out and ready to go in the mail tomorrow. I have voted by mail for almost 20 years now. So I for me, mine in. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so for me, this is nothing new. I, I voted by mail since the midterm after Bush got elected. Or actually, okay. the midterm after Bush got appointed by the Supreme Court. I mean, to to, you know. Being honest, but yeah, I mailed mine in last Thursday, so fantastic. Build it out and mailed it in. I think 18 million voters have sent theirs in so far, from what I've the last thing I've read, and that's good. And I hope many, 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 many millions more do. And uh, to get out there and vote. Um, I think we'll have another episode before the election, but uh, you're hearing it now, man. 
wherever you're at, vote. Yep. How, however you have to in your county or city or state, vote. <laughs> yep. We live in a representative democracy. You need your voice to be heard. Even if I don't agree with it, you still need to have it out there. Um, and your civic duty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bobby, I, do, I did notice something I think we missed. Okay. I, one of the real reasons we love pro wrestling, Missy Hyatt. Francine, woman, Miss Elizabeth. Uh, the list, the list can go on. Yeah. yeah, precious baby doll. Um, you know all that stuff. Well, let's let's wrap this one up. What do you say? All right, man. Goodbye, wrestling fans, for this week. Uh, so long from the Bluegrass State. Yep. So for Tex Johnson, myself, Professor Jeremy Vilmer. And Bobby Blaze. Bye-bye, everybody.